Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Brent, and we hope that this video finds you well in both body and spirit. We want to continue to thank all of you, including our deacons, for staying in contact with one another. It's great when we hear the reports and are able to share the prayer requests and the praises that are happening. Uh, if you are not on our prayer sheet, uh, our prayer emails, our e-prayer chain, we call it, please just contact the church via email or give us a call and we'll make sure you get on that list. Our prayers for one another are very important at this time. Please remember to pray for the trustees. They meet on Monday night via Zoom and uh, many things that will be discussed as we respond and sometimes just react to the, the realities at hand. So pray for them. Continue to pray for the elders as well. We don't yet know what Pennsylvania is going to do beyond April 30th. Once we know, we will get together and meet and continue to make the decisions about what that does for our church. We, again, just thank you all for your support. We also thank you for your giving. Uh, it's been a blessing to see the, the funds that are coming in. Obviously, they're not where they would be if we were meeting, but uh, we feel that, that that's been a blessing to see the ways that you could do that. This, this morning, we're going to share just the message. Next week, we hope to work harder at uh, getting the audio to the best that it could really accommodate more music. So continue to pray for us as we work with that. But our message this morning is going to be entitled, Where Do I Get Answers? Where do I get answers? Thursday night, I was watching a national news network and it said, heard them say it, Pennsylvania extended their stay at home order until May 15th. I heard it, my mother-in-law heard it. I repeated that to a few people. And then I remembered I hadn't double checked it. When I went to double check, the actual report was the governor had decided not to make a decision yet. I was part of fake news. And I keep reminding people, be careful what you believe. Who do you trust? Where do we go to get answers? I, I trust, normally trust that show, but it didn't tell me the truth there. Not intentionally, I'm sure. We have to make sure we know where to get our answers. We're hearing about phase one, phase two, phase three of how things are going to open up. But we all have questions. When is it gonna happen? How is it gonna happen? Our state may be different than, I say our state, I live in Pennsylvania. Our New Jersey friends, we may be different, and we have to look into that. So where are we going to find answers? And I think about the questions you might be asking. When can I reschedule my medical surgery or procedure that was postponed? When will the parks and fitness centers open up? It's not a good time to, to sit home and eat a lot. We need to get out and get to do things and get some exercise. When will our businesses be able to open up? And think about how many businesses have been affected and what will it look like? What, what will restaurants look like when they are finally able to, to do business again? When will grocery stores be fully stocked again? Do you go to the grocery store hoping that I hope what I need is there? And then you realize I got to go to another store because they didn't have it. And then for those that are really struggling in the employment area, when will I be able to go, if my place of employment has permanently closed, when will I be able to go and look for a new job? And how will that look? There's a lot of questions that we have. We also, as I've said, have questions about the church. When will we be able to meet? Should we try to do a drive-in here at the parking lot? Should we just keep trying to improve what we're doing in the sanctuary? Whatever the questions are, we have to find those answers. But I guess I just want to say life is full of questions. It, it's always that way, but at this time, they seem a little bit more pointed, the questions. I remember when I was in high school, hearing a song, actually younger than that, uh, called Blowing in the Wind, Wind. Bob Dylan wrote it, but I heard it from Peter, Paul, and Mary. I heard their uh, live concert. We had a tape of that and listened to it often. It asked nine questions, but the sad part, the answer to the question is, the answer, my friends, is blowing in the wind. That doesn't encourage me at all. Well, there's a song I'd like to look at this morning, a song that our praise team has done, taught to us. It, it asks 16 questions. You could maybe count another one there if you want to. The song's entitled, is he, is he Worthy? The praise team has sung it. They taught it to us. I want us to consider some of the biblical answers to each of the questions asked in that song. 
and hopefully find some encouragement. Our proposition this morning is, as you seek answers, remember your hope is in the Lord, the word, his word, and his plan for this world. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your love and your care. Lord, that's where I begin every prayer these days. I need to remind myself that you have not forgotten us. You still care. You still love. And we know that your plan is a great plan. I pray that as you continue to do your work in our country and around the world, this is not just affecting the United States, that we would see how you're being glorified in the way your people minister and, and bring hope to people the way uh, people can be reached with truth that maybe they weren't open to before. I pray that you bless us now as we look at these questions, particularly looking into your word. Let it be a blessed time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jeff Barrels is going to help as read the scriptures as I ask the questions and comment a little bit on that. The first question, in, is he worthy, is do you feel the word is, world is broken? 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from this world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever, whomever does the will of God abides forever. The world is passing away. Ever since sin entered this world, it was, its days were numbered. We don't know how long that is. Some people believe the world has been around for millions of years. Others believe it's been thousands of years. Either way, we know that this world will come to an end. That passage says that clearly. And if you think about that, it's really God's gift to say, I'm going to destroy sin so that we can be with him in a perfect place where sin is removed. So the world has to be set aside. A new world will be coming. And have you heard this statement? If God doesn't judge the United States, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. We can say this is a judgment from God. Well, all things in one sense are part of God's judgment because it's part of his plan and he allows it. We don't know the full reason for his purposes, but we do uh, know that he has a plan and we want to see that plan. The second question, do you feel the shadows deep in? Luke 21, 9 through 11 says, and when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. A number of people have been asking the question, is pestilence part of the end time prophecy? Here we see from Jesus' words, yes, yes it is. It's part of what's going to happen before the Lord returns. And there's a lot of things that we could say at this time about the Lord returning. I just want to make it clear. My belief in the, the doctrines of these, the theology of the end times, there are plenty of signs for the Lord's return when he returns and steps on the Mount of Olives. There are plenty of signs for that. There are no signs for the rapture. It is something that could happen at any moment. But I was listening to a message from David Jeremiah, and he gave a really good illustration that I wanted to share. When you get into November, right after Halloween, you start to see the signs of Christmas. They start to appear everywhere. There aren't any signs for Thanksgiving. But when you see the signs for Christmas, you know Thanksgiving's coming. As we look at the shadow of this pestilence, that would just be a small reflection, small shadow of what the pestilence that might be happening during the, the tribulation period. We can know that these shadows that we see are a sign that the Lord is going to return. And we, as always, the rapture, we don't know when it's gonna happen. We are just called to be ready. 
Do you feel the world's broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? John 1, 4 through 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness had not overcome it. Jesus is the light of the world. He shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. The darkness has not overcome it. To recognize that when Jesus came into this dark world, he knew what he was coming into, but his light would shine and he would not have a problem. Even though people didn't understand who he was, he was still here to be the light. So the light will not, the dark will not stop the light from getting through. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Amen. <laughs> Isaiah. Isaiah 65 verse 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. This is Old Testament prophecy about what is going to happen. This is Old Testament prophecy concerning the fact that God had a plan from the very beginning to make a new heaven and a new earth. We'll see that in a, a moment from Revelation as well. But, but the reality of the former things will not be remembered. The joy of all of the new creation will overtake all of the heartache that we're feeling now. The next verse goes on to say, is all creation groaning? Romans 8, 22 through 25 says, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoptions as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For this hope we were saved, and now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. That's the picture of faith. Faith and hope go together. We are hoping for what God is going to do not just at the end of this pandemic or when we can get out again we're looking for the hope of the future when god makes all things new is all creation groaning yes it is is a new creation coming revelation 21 verse 1 says and then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more a new creation is coming. This is the verse that I read when I do a funeral to recognize that people that are suffering the loss of a loved one can look forward to a day when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and we will all be in the presence of God together. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 says, and the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. Jesus came to be a light in this dark world, but that light is so much greater than what he could show at that time. When the new heaven and the new earth are there, God will be the light for all of us. No need for the greater. Remember, first thing God said, let there be light. He is the light. And we can see that the, the sun and the moon will no longer be necessary. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those that hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. Back in 2014, we preached through, uh, studied through Revelation. I remember when we started the study, somebody came up and said, oh, we're going to be blessed because we're reading the story of Revelation. I'm here to tell you 2014 was one of the hardest years of ministry we ever had. Uh, from my perspective of being here and, and from any year of ministry in other churches. I don't know why that was, but we are still blessed by God. We are still hopeful because as we understand that God has a plan for the future, whatever we're going through right now seems less important. And we need to hang on to that truth. 
Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Jeff has two passages, one from Revelation and one from Romans. Ro uh, Revelation chapter 5, verses 2 through 5 says, And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into, into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll with its seven seals. And then in Romans chapter eight, verses 19 through 25, it says, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to corruption and to obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Is anyone worthy to open up the scroll? In our studies in Revelation, we understand that the whole seven-year period, the whole difficulty, time of Jacob's trouble, starts with the scroll being opened. When I first heard what that scroll was, it made more sense. When God created this world, he gave it to Adam and Eve. It was theirs to subdue, for them to multiply, and to use for their good purpose. They were perfect, and they would do so perfectly. Once they entered into sin, they, in essence, transferred their authority to Satan. And Satan is referred to as the prince of this world. But when Jesus died on the cross, when he died on the cross, he then referred to Satan as the prince of the power of the air because Jesus says, it is finished. He had accomplished what it would take to buy back this world. So I believe that scroll is the deed to the earth. It was sealed so that no one could play around with the wording. It was foretold in the past that this is what God's plan would be. So as the seals are broken, the final battle for this earth continues. And it, the battle continues for a long time. Even at the end of the millennial kingdom, there's one more attempt at a battle. But with a simple word, word Jesus dismisses all those that would rise up against him. So we know that. So this, there's only one person who is worthy to open that scroll. And he knows the time and the place that it's going to happen. And that's what we talk about when we talk about all the signs, the signs that are going to happen during the tribulation to say, this is it. Do you trust and believe in God? The rapture is all about believing in Christ now. When they're taken away, now it's just a matter of, you're going to go through a lot of suffering. Are you willing to say, I want to be on God's side. For now, we want to say, I want to be on God's side so I have, don't have to be here for that so that I know him and can have confidence and, and comfort. We're supposed to encourage one another with the thought of the rapture. So that's, that's the chorus of the song. F four more questions from the last verse. Does the Father truly love us? 1 John 3.1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. You've heard those phrases, no God, no love, or no God, no peace. Those ideas to K-N-O-W, no God is to truly know love. There's no way to know love without knowing God. So if you say N-O God, then it's N-O love. You don't know his love. Behold, what manner of love He's bestowed upon us that we would be called his children. As the Father truly loves us, does the Spirit move among us? Acts 2, 1 through 3 says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. 
And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house and where they were sitting. And, div and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Pentecost was the beginning of a new ministry for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit had been throughout the Old, Old Testament, referred to many times. Right at creation, the Spirit hovered above the water. But not understanding the triune God in the Old Testament, we now know that the Spirit had a, a particular ministry. As Jesus said, it's good that I'm going away, because when I go away, I will send the Comforter. Is the Spirit moving among us? You can be sure he is. And then I love this. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. He loves us, and he holds on to us forever. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. That's our hope. That's our hope that God will once again. I, I just received a note in the mail today. Someone sent in their offering. They said, Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. We know he's with us now, but we will completely be with him when the new heaven and the new earth occurs. One more verse to be read. The, the, the second time the chorus is sung in the song, it adds, from every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom of, and a priest to God to reign with the Son. Revelation 5. Revelation 5, 9 and 10 says, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people of, for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and a priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. There is a purpose of the cross. There is a purpose for this battle that will happen over the earth. And we need to see what we're experiencing now, just shadows of what's going to come. We know we've been talking about 2 Thessalonians, and that the reality of 2 Thessalonians is it says, do not be deceived to think that the day of the Lord has already come. Very clear in that book, the day of the Lord cannot come until the Antichrist is revealed. And how that all is going to happen, people have been guessing for a long time. But I assure you, no evil leader that we've seen in this world matches what the Antichrist will be. And again, I believe for the church, it is our hope that we will be out of here when he starts to take power and do the things that he's going to do. The conclusion of this message is, no matter who we are and where we might be, our hope is in the Lord, his word, and his plan for this world. To recognize that we have a hope in God, and that hope is going to be seen through his word, and that hope includes all that he has planned for the world. People from every tri uh, tribe and every nation and tongue have been impacted by this virus. It's not just in our country, not just in our state or in our neighborhood. It is throughout the world. world. No matter who they are and where they are, they are impacted. Some are in their home country, while others were away and they have not yet been able to go home. This virus does not discriminate between race or ethnicity, nor does it discriminate between religions. And I want you to think about that word religion. It is so easy to get caught up about the physical needs of this time and the financial needs of this time, but the world always has faith needs. There are people that believe in a false religion that does not answer their questions. We pray that we can show the truth of God's word that will give them the peace and the questions answered that they need to have. You may be frustrated about what you cannot do right now, but I pray that this message encourages you today that God is in control. He has a plan. He calls us first to walk in the spirit and then take time to grow in the Lord. Think about the time you have now to get into his word. Use that time. 
We are also called to love one another. I've been praying hard for this. The fact that people are sequestered in their houses for a long time. That's, that's a challenge. I was watching a video yesterday. Just the difference between male and female is a constant challenge. It's a reality. Well, then you add other people, children, and well, whoever's in your household. We are called to love one another. Continue to ask God to give you an extra measure of grace at this time when everybody's in the house for so long. Pray that your love for your family could grow at this time. Then pray also for your neighbors. I've been saying from the beginning, don't just think about the church. Think about the neighbors that you can reach out to. We have a neighbor that we've offered three, four times. He's finally starting to take us up on buying him things from the grocery store, and we were able to take him a meal the other day. Don't stop in trying to do good for the people. Be a light and a testimony at this time. But then I also think about those who are on the front lines. We have a number of nurses and, and medical professionals that, that attend our church. They need our prayers. We need to be supporting them. And not just them, think, I think about, I'm a police chaplain. I think about the, the police department that needs to go out for still respond to things as they're trying to protect themselves and their families from the, from the virus. And then somebody said, we need to view all of our grocery workers and our restaurant workers who are doing delivery, helping us meet our needs, gas station attendants, people that are taking care of things that we need right now, they're on the front lines as well. We need to remember to pray for all of these people around us in our community. Finally, we need to remember to pray for the people around the world every people and tribe, every nation and tongue. We're getting missionary letters from people as they, as they let us know how they are doing. And I can't imagine, we have so many supports here in this country. And I, I just try to read through and imagine what it would be like to be going through it in another country. They've learned to navigate the way that country does business, but everything is turned on its ear. And we need to, to recognize, we need to support them in prayer. And as you think about your giving, please don't neglect the fact that these missionaries, there's a lot of people that support them that maybe don't have a paycheck to support them. We need to make sure that they are being supported as the best we can from what we've committed to do for the church. So remember to pray for them as well. And all that we are and all that we do at this time, please do not forget to grow in your faith. This is more important than your body. Your body's going to end sometime. Death is coming to all, or the rapture. It's more important than your, econ your financial status. The Lord knows what you need. He'll provide for it. Grow your faith. Ask God to grow your faith at this time. We don't know how long things are going to be going on like this. Neither do we know when the rapture will be coming. We need, we need to know and understand we are called to walk by faith and grow in knowing our God no matter what happens next. Father, I thank you for this time, and I pray for everyone that hears my voice, that if they do not understand what this faith about the rapture and the coming of our Lord, or even understanding what the message of the cross was and the resurrection, sin has entered this world and everybody is born into sin. And if that sin is not cared for, we are eternally separated from you, Father. I pray that you would allow everybody within the sound of my voice to know that there's a Savior, a Savior who died on the cross, a Savior who rose again from the dead so that we could call upon him and say, Jesus, I recognize that as a sinner, I need to find a sacrifice for my sin. There is only one perfect sacrifice that is shown with power, the power to truly forgive me. All the other religions in this world will fall short because they are not based on the true only begotten Son of God. I pray that you would help us to know you, Jesus, as our Savior, and to know the power of your Spirit working in us at this difficult time. I thank you, Father, for all that you will do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be well. And may God bless.